Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher at your service. And this video is a follow-up on this little dynamo that I just recently finished. And there were three videos on that if you have not already seen them. But uh, I want to hook this up in this video to this little steam engine. Now over a year ago, perhaps a year and a half ago, I made this little Stewart Progress engine. And that was a nine-part video, you might remember that. But when I built the engine, my intentions was at some point to have it power a dynamo. So I had bought this little kit from PM Research and I showed it in a video quite a while ago and then I didn't get around to building it for really a whole year. But sometime during that and perhaps six months ago or so I received a letter from Doug Bollinger and you've heard his name several times in my videos because he's been very helpful to me. But he had built that engine and there it is and he was showing me in the pictures uh, how he went about building it and a nice long letter and he's been extremely helpful but in that same package with the letter he sent me a kit and the kit was comprised of four pulleys there's two of them and there's the other two in uh, some of them with 3 16 bore some with eighth inch bore this is eighth inch shaft this is 3 16 shaft they're step pulleys that he made they're beautifully made he also was the man you recall that sent me these tiny little hex bolts that uh, he suggested using in place of these because he did in his but they were just a little too short to use so I did not use them and thank you Doug for all of this stuff but also in the kit he included two belts now these are little spring belts that you've seen these. These were, came from either Willesco or Mamad or one of those companies and he said go ahead and use the pulleys and the belts uh, to hook up your dynamo to the engine. So this is a bit of an experiment here. What I'm going to do on this piece of uh, OSB board, and this is all just temporary to see how it works, is to uh, screw down the engine and I already have done that and the board is much bigger than I needed and after I determine the location of this I will also screw it down and here's a little light that I'm going to use to power that you know so I have to use a three-quarter horsepower electric motor on my compressor to provide air for this tiny little engine to run this tiny little dynamo which will run even a tinier light bulb so I know the whole thing is kinda of foolish and crazy but I'm, I'm having fun doing it I hope you, some of you enjoy watching it anyway. Now, if you've never seen this type of belting here, notice that this end here is tapered and smaller, and after you determine the length that you need, and you can just cut this off with a side cutter, you just screw the two together, and you've got yourself an endless belt, and he suggested a drop of Loctite at some point for that. Well, I experimented here off camera, and the idea here is this is a 5,000 RPM dynamo, so in order to get that speed, I have to run the engine at fairly high speed and use the large pulley and then reduce it to the smaller pulley here. The problem being this metal is very slick and there just isn't enough friction. It slips so and it's, it's a little too stretchy, so I have... Uh, decided not to use this and I had some other ones also that somebody sent me and these are springs that came out of uh, oil seals, large oil seals and they are made up the same way but I'm not going to use that either. So I was looking through all of my stuff here in the shop and I had all kinds of O-rings and belts but I think these might be vacuum cleaner belts, I'm not real sure. But looking through the stuff I had a whole package here of O-rings from uh, FOMO Co, but actually they call them gaskets. Yeah, I'm really gabbing, I know it. But there's one of them, and that is what worked the best. I wish it was just a little bit longer than that, but that is the belt that I'm going to use here as soon as I fire up the compressor. And, well, let's face it, I did try this off camera, so I'll go ahead and hook up the little uh, light to the leads here on the dynamo and uh, we'll see what it does. The compressor is pumped up. Notice the little light bulb here. So watch that light bulb and this is still 
loose. Remember, this is an experiment here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on the air. But, you know, this is a permanent magnet type, uh, so there is some resistance, and sometimes I need to spin start it. And uh, I'm starting out here at... Well, I did start right up without spinning it. And believe it or not, this is a load. I'm running it at 15 pounds. Now watch, that light bulb doesn't show up very well. Uh, let me crank her up here. That's about 20 pounds. Now Doug said that he didn't want to use LEDs. Yeah, I used LEDs in one of the other projects that I did. But, uh, the neat thing about this is it flickers, you know, and it's more realistic than using an LED. Also, the LEDs are, what, one and a half volts, so I'd have to find the right combination so I didn't burn them out. But that runs real nice. Let me go a little bit faster. And in one of the other videos, I also had a light post that I made. I guess I'll get that out and show you here in a minute, but... So what I've done here now is proven that the dynamo works and the whole setup works. So now I'm going to, off camera, get another board. I'm going to remount this all on a better board, nice solid hardwood, and uh, mount everything down. We'll take a look at that. I had considered using this little uh, Frankenstein knife switch on there, but I suppose that's a bit of overkill and foolishness, so maybe I won't do that. Uh, I have to get my alignment right and cut the board to just a little smaller than what you see here. So, pretty neat, I think. Stand by. Some of you may remember this Jensen power plant that I have, and I've shown that in videos. But take a look at this. There's one of those belts that is destroyed, stretched out, and here's another one that rusted through, probably before I owned it, but there's just enough rust on there where that's that's no good. But now I'm glad to have these other belts provided by Doug, so I'll go ahead and retrofit this. I kind of forgot all about this, that that, that was broken, so this is part of the inspiration for that. And let me show you something else. Well, I also built this little dynamo in a video for, on one of my other engines. And you may remember that. And, and those were LED lights up here in, in the lamp that I made. So and that's a couple years ago. I see the date on there, February 16th. So that's a thing of the past, too. But I, I made that, and because of this, and this it did work all right, but I wasn't totally satisfied with this because that was just all built by Bagess and Bagash, and I wanted one that was engineered properly, and so that's why I finally broke down and spent the money to buy the little PM dynamo. So, all right, now when, you, when I do get back, I will have this mounted on another board. I thought I'd review this little engine that I haven't run it in a year or more. But it has LEDs, and I never did like the way they flickered. Someone said that I need a capacitor. Notice that there's a lifting eye here, and I never did complete that on the other dynamo, but it was in the drawing. Just for appearance, strictly cosmetic. You know, it sure does help if you have a nice selection of supplies in your shop. For instance, I have, I don't know how many drawers like this that I got from auction. So, even though I have a million other fasteners, it's just, these are real well organized as far as the length and the diameter. At 13 cents a piece, that's a pretty old kit. There it is. I just, I had lost that and had to go into my back supply. I can lose things in about two seconds around here. Well... That was an unnecessary little rant, was it not? But here we are. I think it looks good. It looks a lot better on the hardwood base. 
Let's fire it up. That's about 12 pounds. Now watch the light bulb. Oh, it was loose. I like that little old porcelain. Oh, chop. I like that porcelain socket. I had to interrupt the video and turn the compressor off. It was so loud. But there it is. Now, Doug, in his uh, little dynamo, he ran the, the wires underneath. And I had considered doing that, but I wasn't in the mood. So I just got external wire in there. I really like the looks of that dynamo and the way it was designed. And this is a pretty engine, too, if I dare say so, by Stewart. I got everything lined up just so. Hope some of you out there like that. Leave a comment if you like it. Say nothing if you hate it. Silence is golden. Yeah, my socket is cracked. But the thing is probably 90 years old. Perhaps I should have painted the dynamo the same color here. I don't know. But nevertheless, the job is done. And I don't know what the RPM is here. I should check it with my electronic spectrometer. I should say what the tachometer of what the speed is here at the generator. I know it's certainly not 5,000, and I must confess this light bulb is about a 3 volter, so you know that I'm not producing 12 volts or it would have burned out as I showed you in one of the earlier videos. So. All right, that completes this uh, video and this series on the dynamo. Take a look at the other ones if you haven't seen it. Uh, Hope you like my videos, and this is Triple Kane saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.